Hey guys, welcome, or welcome back to Proper Chucked. My name is Hilton. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing, but that's half the fun of this, right? Anyways, if you're new here, thanks for joining. I really do appreciate it. Consider subscribing or dropping a like. If you are a returning viewer, I really do appreciate you guys coming back again. It means a lot to me. This content's really fun and enjoyable to film, and I'm, I'm having a good time with it. This week, we have something a little bit different. We've got an old engine that needs a bit of reviving. If, like me, you're model railroading on a budget, sometimes it's hard to look at these 2023 catalogs and think, damn, I really want that stuff, but it is completely out of my price range. But you don't need to look far for good quality, older models. And that's the subject of today's video. I've picked up a really old Bachmann V1. Well, not really old, it was made in 1991, which is as old as I am. Um, thanks, mom and dad. Um, but <laughs> what I mean is, there's, there's some really good quality locomotives and rolling stock as well out there that are waiting to be found or rediscovered. Sometimes they're just sitting at the bottom of a suitcase, so in somebody's basement or in a loft, and they're being given away for next to nothing. I picked up this Buckman V1 for about 10 pounds. And I could see that underneath all the dust and the cobwebs and the mothballs, there's a really beautiful locomotive waiting to be discovered again. So let's see if we can resurrect this workhorse of the LNER on the route between Glasgow and Scotland today. We're gonna to take it apart, open it up, clean it out, and see if we can get her running and running strong again. Let's dive in. Okay, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this, let's take a look at this little logo. This is a V1 designed by Sir Nigel Gracely uh, during his time at the LNER, London Northeastern Railways. Uh, this particular model was produced by Bachmann. I believe that they are the only company that produces these V1 slash V3 logos. Um, the only difference between being between the V1 and V3s is, I believe, the boiler size and pressure. Um, this particular mo model, as you can see, <laughs> uh, is in a terrible, terrible state. However, I can see that underneath this ugly exterior lies a beautiful beast. So, I'm looking forward to getting it fixed up and working. Okie doke, she's on the rolling road. Um, I suspect this might be a pickup here, which is not connected obviously. So let's just see if she's got anything in her. I can hear something in there. There's definitely a response to the, the power input. But I suspect just because she's so jammed up that that's this is what's causing her not to actually run at all. Okay, uh, let's just take a look underneath here what we have. Um, looks like that. He's probably hold down the, the wheels inside, which looks like it could be our. Okay, that's the pony truck. Just switch heads and the screwdriver. Let's see what we can do. Now this is a split chassis from Bachmann. Um, I know that there are people out there who think this is not a great design. Um, I wouldn't have any experience or knowledge of it myself, um, but it is just interesting to know it's fee split here. She's, um, she's totally clocked up. In fact, I think she has an entire ecosystem growing on her internally, which is just terrifying. This is gonna take some serious cleaning up. Okay, let's just start getting all this gunk off the top of her. Absolutely filthy stuff. Oh, this poor, poor logo. Shame. 
I think this is the fate of many, many <laughs> model train. Sadly, they just kind of get forgotten about in somebody's basement or loft um, as interest wanes in it. Um, you can see underneath all of this, there's something rather beautiful. Um, the fact that after all these years, we can put, put something like this back together and get it running is always, always really rewarding. Um, as I mentioned in my last video, this is probably the part of model railroading that I've enjoyed the most, is kind of restoring stuff. Um, I think, my, like I said, um, there's definitely, it's, it's quite difficult for me to come across, especially newer stuff in South Africa, newer Hornby and British locos. So um, I'm kind of getting my journey going with, with a lot of the older stuff. Um, and it's obviously exposing me to some really old locos, which is great. I'm enjoying it. And every time I come across something that I know would kind of fit in into my layout. Um, you know, I'm not breaking the bank when I have to pick it up and that makes it quite, quite affordable and doable at this point. Hence my sort of rapid collection, growing collection of, of locomotives. Okay. There's, there's definitely a lot of, um, I can feel there's a lot of grease inside these, these parts, these moving parts. Um, so we're probably going to have to just use a bit of IPA and, and clean that up where we can. Um, next I'm going to get the tweezers and we're going to just see if we can pull out the things that are in between. Okay. All sorts of muck in here. Now I know, um, I watched Bill, uh, again, repair one of these and I, I know that he, ooh, my goodness. Um, he was very hesitant to open up the split chassis. Um, and I am equally so. Um, here we go, look at that, worming its way out there. It's like, it's like surgery, model train surgery. This poor thing, it is so, so clogged up. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> um, We've cleaned her up a bit. Let's see if we can slap her back on the rolling road and see if we get any kind of responsiveness. There's definitely something here. She would like to move. Okay, I think what we need to do is actually probably give her a little bit of an IPA bath. Um, not a bath per se, don't just stick your locos in IPA, but certainly a, a clean down in many regards. Right, I'm gonna just clean up my brush a little bit. Um, what I'm gonna do now is uh, just give this, this loco a bit of a clean with um, some IPA. Uh, just give it a bit of a scrub, see if we can clean up some of the stuff that's sitting in there. Time for another test of that IPA is cleared up. We've got something. I think the uh, contact points, the wheels might just need to be cleaned here. Uh, let's clean those up. It's just double checking my work um, on these um, 
the internals and it does look to be quite clean now so feeling fairly confident about that let's just take a cotton bud to the wheels and um, clean them up a little bit And we're running. Let's clean that worm drive as we go. Let's check the other way. It's looking quite stable there. So guys, what I've decided to do is just open up the, the running plate here. I think that there might still be a bit of gunk inside. Um, I'm quite tentatively doing so. Um, didn't really want to go into this, but I suspect that it's after a second clean, it's still struggling a little bit with the, with the crawl. So I want to just open this up and see if there's maybe some, some more of that gunk hidden inside that I can clean out. It does feel like it's quite stuck in there though. Um, and I suspect that it's due to... Oh! <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you, can't, you, you can't script that. That's crazy. Um, okay. So this split chassis thing. Um, it's a first for me, um, but essentially you've got your positive, negative, um, each side of the rail um, coming through a different wheel, but the wheels themselves are the pickups. And as you can see, there's, there's a plastic pot sort of all the way through the loco um, to kind of separate it um, to stop it from shorting. Now, basically all the components are all connected. Okay, just going to take a cotton swab to the inside of this thing to see what we've got. There's definitely some grease in here that is um, kind of holding things up a little bit, I can see. So I'll get in here with the toothbrush as well, just now. Um, you can see on the inside here, actually, if I just sort of rotate this around for you, um, just how greasy that is. It's awful. I mean, that, that's all just clogging up the main gear. It's fantastic. <laughs> just get that out of there. Filthy. Ugh. Okay, guys. Um, we've encountered a new problem. Um, the front bogey. Now, the issue is I don't actually have the original front bogey. So I've had to kind of figure out a plan for what I'm going to do. First of all, find the right kind of wheel size for it. Um, I don't have a hell of a lot of spares, but I dug through a box at an old model train shop the other day just to see if I could find something. Um, what I did find was these, um, I think they're from a tender. Um, these are plastic wheels, uh, which is not ideal. Um, however, they're just too big. As well. um, they kind of look uh, sort of disproportionate on the front of that. Uh, so they need to be a little bit smaller based on the photos I've seen of the V1. Um, 
The other problem I have is that this is a pickup point essentially. So I'm assuming the previous uh, front wheel that was on here was also a split wheel with a plastic piece in the middle to isolate it because there's two pickups here, one on the left and the right, um, which sort of feed through up here onto the, the top of the split chassis and feed into each side. So um, I don't have something that will fit that, um, but I found another spare um, that I thought might work, which was around this size. Um, now that I think looks a lot more appropriate on the front of the front of that. Um, it might be too small, but it's it's essentially what I'm working with. Um, the The problem is that it's it's um, you know a single contact point all the way through. Um, I suppose it actually doesn't matter because it's isolated. But regardless, I've decided to just play it safe and figure out a solution for this. Um, so it would be to have slightly thicker so that it can go through the middle. What I did was I took a cotton swab and I cut it down the middle and I just halved it and used the inside of that cotton bud to stick the wheel through just to give it a bit more, um, a little bit more uh, width. Uh, so I'm gonna put that on now, it should fit. So that's what it looks like. Um, I've got the second wheel and I'll just slide that through. Um, gives you a better angle here. Slide that through. <clears throat> and I, that will be our leading wheel solution for now anyways. Um, I think that should do the job um, fairly well. So, um, yeah, overall that, that's, I think, running quite well at this point. Let's tackle this. Okay, so let's tend to this body, this poor, poor dusty body. Um, what I'm going to do now is I've got a, a bowl of lukewarm water, uh, nothing too hot, we don't wanna scorch the poor thing. Uh, Well guys, there you have it. Our V1 is up and running. As you can see, she was running stunningly at this point. Um, it just took a little bit of elbow grease and some time to resurrect this old legend of the railways. And I'm, I'm, I'm proper chuffed 
honestly she's she's a beautiful beautiful logo in fact probably the most detailed logo i have on the layout all for less than 10 pounds and just a, a bit of work um, looking at her in a little bit more detail you can just see how many separately fitted parts there are from the whistles to the handrails lamp irons smoke dart smoke box dart um, it's all there i mean for a, a locomotive or a model that was made in 1991 uh, she's she's really quite beautiful um, obviously the the sort of glaring issue is the front bogey and the wheel um, you might have noticed in the videos that uh, it doesn't quite make contact with the rail at certain points. That's not a problem for me right now. Aesthetically, she looks correct. However, I will endeavor to try and find the correct size front bogey for her to get her running as accurately as possible. But um, I mean, that's that. I'm, I'm really happy with how that went. It goes to show that, you know, there are these little legends hiding out in dark cupboards in certain places waiting to be resurrected and brought back to the railway line um, as they were in their heyday it's actually kind of sad if you think about it all these forgotten model trains that are probably gathering dust somewhere it's almost reminiscent of the end of steam as we were saying goodbye to these locos lined up for scrap so i'm stoked um, and if you enjoyed this video uh, please drop a like uh, it would be much appreciated or drop a comment even better i've thoroughly enjoyed responding to comments in the past couple of weeks and chatting to other model railroaders about what they do or what they would improve on. Um, it's all part of the learning process for me. I'm still so very green and, and learning so much. So I'd appreciate it if you did that. Until then, until the next video at least, uh, keep your engines fired and uh, stay on track and I'll see you guys soon. All the best.